Welcome back to another episode of The Slice, and it's not just any episode. This is episode number seven. Seven is a lucky number across the board. Triple sevens at the casino gets you the jackpot. Speaking of casinos and gamblings, we have to shout out Betway, the presenting sponsor. They will anything you need when it comes to the gambling, go to Betway. I'm sure it's betway.com. If it's not Betway, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure Figure I looked it, it up. Yeah, and it is. We have a great show for you guys today. Obviously, it's mid swing of the Olympics. So you know we will get into that. We're also going to cover the tournament results this past week. But our three main stories. First one, Nadal. Last week we were talking about Djokovic. Could this be it for him if he wins the gold medal? This week, Nadal just lost to Djokovic. We're talking, is this the end of Nadal? Is Roland Garros Olympics the last time we'll see Nadal? And some other, we'll touch on some other Olympic storylines. Second, Stevens home tournament. The National Bank Open preview. Let's go. We're going to get a little bit of uh, maybe some predictions. Maybe we'll get a classic Mystic Steven, Mystic Steven prediction where he will tell us our winner early on. And lastly, this isn't beef, but it could. I'd rather this not become beef, <laughs> but there's a lot of pro players starting podcasts, which obviously could cause some problems if we weren't absolute G's in the game. But we gotta we gotta touch on Andy Roddick, Jack Sock, John Isner, Sam Sam Query, and Stevie Johnson. They started a podcast. Andy has his own. The other four started their own, and we just need to talk it out. I think a good a good spot to close it out or to kind of go from here would be to have each of them on the slice individually, and we, then we can talk about it with them. And then we can like drop, like we can start drama within their groups. So, you know, it right. eventually causes their dis- their demise. Yeah. Like, dang, John, that's crazy because last week I was actually talking to <laughs> Sam. <laughs> but that's what we got. He said he didn't like you. Right. Yeah, it's, it's totally. And um, yes. And we also have our smash or pass segment. So, Steven, I've, before we started, before we pressed record, I said it looked like you had a little tan going on. How was the how was the past week? Okay, my past week was actually pretty crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Most week, a lot of weeks aren't like this, and maybe you know some people think their weeks are always crazy. My last more like my few days. So busy time in life. We, I'm waiting on the baby to come. We w- we had a baby shower, and my parents came in from mm-hmm. wh- where they live, like four you know seven hours away travel time, and they stayed with us. Uh, and that was great. And we, so we had a baby, a baby shower and then we went golfing. I'm, I'm a huge golfer. I love golfing. I'm okay. Not amazing. Like I should be better, but, uh, we golf Friday and then I golf Saturday with my dad and my father-in-law and another random guy named Keith. Uh, and I legit got a hole in one. I was just about to say, I saw your scorecard and I didn't swipe up because I was, I, I, Probably clicked the backwards on the Instagram story four times. That way, let me make sure this didn't say seven and it wasn't like a triple box around. Par three, hole in one. What? Hey, what? What hole was it on? It was hole number thirteen at Cordova Bay on in Victoria, Vancouver Island. It was 146 yards and like a straight up. It was crazy. I I hit the ball and I was like, oh, it's a little fat. Like I thought it might just kind of not even get to the green. And then it did, and it bounced hard, and it rolled, kind of like ran up the green, and the pin was at the back. And then it's a little bit uphill, and then it was like, it just kind of like disappeared as it went by the hole. And me and my father-in-law are like, wait, what? He's like, and then it was, I was having like a kind of a bad round in general, so I was like kind of like almost like mad when I started in the hole. And then it's just like, also I was like, what? So that was absolutely nuts. Uh, just went up there, and then, yeah, it was in the hole. Is that your we first like, one ever? No, it's, it's not. So I got one Flex. when I was ten years. I got one when I was ten years old, like as on actually a longer hole. It was 150 yards, and I was using like a driver as a ten year old. Just smashed it out there like Bryson DeChambeau, like mini me. Got all one. So Dude. you know, I was kind of cool about. it. I was like, you know, what? no big deal. Add another which bag one, tech. Which one do you like more? Oh, well, this one because I like it just happened and I, like hit it with an eight iron instead of a driver. So <laughs> it's like a it's like realistic shot to go in whereas the other was one was like, like the, a, the equivalent of like driving a par four 
did did you run did you like run down to the hole or was it kind of you stayed with the group no, i was like i was like shell shocked i was just like it was so kind of like random because it was not i guess like a hole ones do are always random because no one's like trying to get a hole one i mean i guess you kind of like you know what i mean most people yeah. are just trying to like hey i'm trying to connect with this ball and land Put it, it close on the green. to the pin that'd right yeah that'd be great to have it on the green potential birdie putt that would be great no one's like i'm trying to make this from the the tee box uh funny thing is i was playing in a work event like two weeks earlier where if i got in a whole one i would have won 20 grand so i would have been i would have been rolling on the ground taking my shirt off oh. you know kissing everyone around me if i had won 20 grand but not quite but great 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 week overall from that so yeah hey how about you jp what was your week like that's nuts my week was pretty good before i get to my week though i do so i've, I've only played golf one time and i do i need this on the record because it was a tournament. It was a charity tournament in Columbia, which is where my college was, University of South Carolina, go Cox. And nobody wanted to play with me. I was assembling a team. They knew I'd never play golf. So all my friends were like, bro, I'm not joining your team. And so what did I do? I didn't feel sorry for myself. I didn't throw a pity party. I picked myself up. I said, let's get in the lab and let's think, how do we, how do we make them all eat their words and steal their money and so what i did i called my boy keenan husky up he is currently on the corn ferry tour at the time we were in college Damn. he was all american in college and so i said pause, pause 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 what does all american mean for us canadians like literally i hear that all the time Ooh. i have no clue what it means so depending on the sport basically all americans is in football there would be 12 for there would be 11 first team all american football players on the offense so it's like the best 12 12 offensive players in football golf i believe maybe there's also 11 guys it's the top 12 ranked golfers right yeah. it's the top guys in the country okay. and so Got he would he was all american his sophomore year and so i called him up i say keenan I need you, bro. The whole everybody's sleeping on me. They don't think I could pull this off. What are the, what are the odds you could play? He's like, yeah, we just got to get cleared by the athletic department. You know, your boy worked in the athletic department. I said that's not an issue. We we got this. <laughs> so we played. We won. We took home the trophy. Keenan won longest drive. He couldn't accept any uh any of the rewards because this was pre NIL oh, yeah. period. So your boy yeah. raked in the gift cards, courtesy yeah. of Keenan. Heck and yeah. I was one and I'm I'm one and oh in competitive golf tournaments. That's pretty big. I don't think I've ever won anything in golf. So that's uh you know, other than getting hole in once. So but uh <laughs> that's pretty sick. So My, just yeah. like are you quitting now or are you gonna kind of like maybe get back into it one day? I don't know, man. There's there's no real what what else is out there for me? I've kind of accomplished it all <laughs> in golf. <That's, laughs> I don't know. No, I, I would know. um Not what else there. I would love to play, but I think I'd be more of a nine hole guy just because of the attention span with it all. It does. It is an insane time commitment. Like you leave your house. You're like, bye, honey. I'm gone for like five hours minimum, including travel. Right. Minimum. I just feel like, I don't know. There, there's so many other it. Cause I just probably, I would end up, it would take me too long to get good enough to go around and play. And I'm sure anytime I would land in the, in the bunker, I'd probably just end up being like, yeah, I'm, not hitting the side let me just toss it out here and then that, that's, that's okay no too. fun it's okay to take it more casually that's always fun yeah. to be around but um, anyways, how was your week yes other than that my week was good this past week was actually crazy um but then I, I can't even remember the weeks are all flowing together on me now did i already tell you that we had the po other podcasts i work on we had robert f kennedy on the podcast you did I saw that, but you didn't say anything about it. That's crazy. Like you you met him, like you shook his hand. Shook his hand, got the introduction, got the photo with them. And you know, the, the Kennedy family in America, that's a that's royalty. Yeah, that that's royalty. And so that was a really cool experience getting to meet somebody like that. Also, O's the mentalist. Don't remember if I mentioned that last time or not, but no, but I saw this guy. Have you seen this guy? I don't know. I only saw what he did, uh, like a little clipping on the bus and bus. He needs to be. He needs to be put on a watch list, bro. <laughs> we, we we joked about it. We when before he came on the show, we were like, all right, some somebody somebody go grab the gun in case things get out of hand, and we got to <laughs> so get rid of our boy. Gun, you're, you're saying there's a gun in the warehouse. 
There could be. There, there might not be. This could be could be a metaphor. But so that that was cool. Then we then I went to Houston and Detroit, all within forty eight hours of each other, doing some other work. Crazy. So I've been I've been all over the place, which is why for the viewers. Right now it's 10 17 p.m. Central Time for me. It's 8 17 Central Time for Steven or whatever time he's on. I don't know what they call it out there. That's right. That's right. You got it. But so we're grinding. So leave a comment. Cheer us on. Right. Thank you. Thank you for grinding. And then while you're also doing that, subscribe. Subscribe. Your boys are tired. And uh, but we do it for the for the love of the game. Uh results. Sorry, I'll just hop into that. Is that okay, JP? Crush them. Results from the week. JP updated me because, uh, unfortunately, I have not been watching any of these. I all eyes have been on the Olympics, which, yes. you know, for the for the pure tennis uh, heads out there, is a bit of a shame because there's no points involved to the Olympics. It's kind of an exhibition if you think about it for your country, but it's a big deal. But all these are all the real tournaments where people are grinding for points. So, in Atlanta, the ATP 250 last version of it ever, they're losing their tournament. And, uh, you know, that could be a smash or pass comment because, you know, to be honest with you, there's no one in the crowd in any of these matches. Oh, man. It's crazy. I don't know what's going on. But uh, Weekday like, do you have any intel into what's going on there? I, I, dude, I truly think it's these weekday matches, especially in the U.S. I mean, nobody is going to be showing up to a, to a 250 event on a Tuesday at 1 p.m. to go watch. No disrespect to – Japan is – Fun fact about me, Japan is actually my favorite country. Nobody is showing up to watch Yoshi Nishioka at 1.30 on a Tuesday, except for me, probably. Yeah, you would. But yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, that is probably a big part of it. Anyways, Nishioka defeats Jordan Thompson to win the Atlanta Open. Uh, you got Jerry Shang improved to 3-0 and versus Ben Shelton. Yeah, Ben Shelton was there, not on Team USA, I will add. Yeah. Interesting. Uh and yeah, and Jerry Shang made a career high after making the semis. Good for Jerry. Big J. Uh, ATP Dang. 250 Plava, Lugana, Croatia Open, Umag. Uh, Sorundolo defeats Musetti. Interesting. Musetti also not at the Olympics. Hey, Sorundolo, pretty sure he went to South Carolina. What? Yeah, I really? Really, might need to fact check myself on that, but <laughs> could be. Very, very true. It's interesting to see who's not at the Olympics because you kind of see who is and you're, you're not really checking in your head who's not at the Olympics uh, when I see these teams, which we'll get into. Uh, WTA 250 in uh, the Generali Open, which is in, uh, what's it called? Uh, Austria, Kitzbühel. Uh, Berrettini goes back to back in the uh, Central European countries of Switzerland and Austria, winning in Gstaad, where I used to live, and Kitzbühel defeating Gaston, the French rat, who I call because he's a cheater. And this is big accusations, but he's like straight up a cheater, Gaston. Like he like literally Whoa, gets bro. he gets fined for like cheating in matches, like doing a bunch of shady stuff. You should go look it up. It's funny. I'll take any heat from any French fan, which there won't be any because I don't think he really has that many supporters. But it's uh, anyways, he's a good player, but he's got me. Guy. I'm a supporter. Yeah, of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. WTA 250, Lassie Open. Andriva, Mira Andriva, 17 years old, defeats Avanaisen, uh, youngest since Coco Golf in 2017 to win a tournament. Just fire uh, stats here, JP. Great work. Yes, sir. And WTA 125, uh, Polish Open. Alicia Parks defeats Maya Joint. Okay, main story time. Kick us off, JP. What's 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 on the docket today? The number one thing on the docket. This is fresh off. Today, Djokovic beats Nadal. Well, I believe it was what six one six four six oh six four six one six four six one six four. Of course, just like it is for all of these older guys on tour, that he gets asked right after the match, Could this be your last? Could this be your last tournament? Nadal answers, I feel like you guys ask this all the time. I don't know. It's almost, I now feel like you guys want me to leave. It's like, hey, Rafa, no, nobody really wants that. They're, you know, they're just trying to do their job. But yeah. what do you think, Stephen? Is could this be the last time we see Rafa? Well, no, I don't think it will be. He's 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 not setting it up like that. Like, and he's the type of guy who I just feel like he wants to squeeze every last drop of juice out of the out of the orange, you know. And fair enough. I mean, he's still out there. It was 
it was looking rough for a while. I believe I did not get to watch the match, but I did give a preview and I did pre predict that Djokovic would win into just saying didn't make the title of it, but I don't know what to say. Uh, it was like six one. And it was like, I think Djokovic was up a break or a double break in the second set. And it was looking like chop suey, like, right. Say good night. And then it was like, all of a sudden I tune in and I did watch it from here. It was four all in the second set. I was like, okay, we got a match. And then Djokovic made some nervy forehand errors and, and Nadal's like there. So it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's six, one, six, four. It's not, but again, they played, that was their 60th match. So, right. Yeah. I don't think he's retiring, but the quote that I'm seeing here from the Hindustan times, love it is quote. You want me to retire every day, guys. You ask me for that. I am trying to do my best. I cannot live every single day with the feeling that it's going to be or not be my last match. I've been suffering a lot with injuries the last two years. So, that's a guy like to me that seems that believes that he has his game still in him. And, yep. you know, I think he's the kind of guy like, you're going to have to drag me off this court. If you're going to, if you want to stop me, you're going to have to kill me from uh, Ozark. You know what I'm saying? Right. When, when, when do you think he would retire? I mean, if he can't compete at all anymore, like, and he just made the final in the, in the Nordea open and, yeah, if he can't compete at all, like we saw with Federer, because of Federer's knees, he couldn't like play. He's like, I'm not losing to Hercatch in the quarterfinals of Wimbledon anymore. I'm just not. <laughs> no yeah. offense, Hercatch. He's like, I'm just not doing that again to myself. Or <laughs> no, but like when he's just physically not able to do it, or game wise not able to do it, I think he'll retire. But it hasn't been that long because I think his he's in this cycle of like being injured. So then he's like, well, I'm injured, so I can't play that well. And then he comes back and he's like, well, I was just recently injured, so I got to get my game back up. And he gets right. there for a little bit and then he's injured again. So you're never really like, he's never really like, oh, I've played for like six months and haven't put like three wins together. Yeah. So maybe I should, you know, but yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a bit of a nothing burger. I think he'll probably be at French open next year. That's my prediction. That, that's what I, I think French open next year is going to be his last tournament because deep down we all, we all have that. Well, obviously we don't cause we're not really athletes, but I feel like every athlete has that Speak for yourself. I'm a I'm a top level athlete. You did hit a hole in one that was put you in an elite class. That's right. Yeah. So there's a lot of PGA Tour players out there that have not hit a hole in one this year. Keep that in mind, listeners. That's a fact. There's not. There's actually probably most PGA Tour players, including Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy, who haven't hit one since Saturday, like I have. So, just saying. Steven has hit more hole in ones this season than Tiger Woods. That's a and fact. that is a fact. Um. But they, we, I feel like, you know, especially in tennis, you have to have a, a little bit of an ego to be a top tennis player. And you you all want that that last storybook ending. Whether you win, whether he wins the French Open or not, you still want that send off like selfishly, I feel like. And I and I do and I do get it. Like I would say if I'm Murray or Nadal or any pro athlete or any athlete at any level that you're playing like at a at a level that you can't continue like you're never going to be able to play a pro sport again essentially right. when you hang it up and i always think about this with like athletes who are struggling like in you know in the college ranks or the junior ranks and they're not getting the play in time i'm like just trying to enjoy it because like when it's done it's done right. and you can go do other things which is great too there's like no nothing to be depressed about but i would think if i'm rafa it's like i my future is sitting in mallorca on my yacht with my family <laughs> loving it cracking oysters drinking tequilas living the best life ever making appearances it's gonna be awesome yeah. why i don't need to rush that if i can still like rally with these guys, if i can still go six four in a set with djokovic why would i not stay out there and i and i like that murray he's kind of his body seems to be like really breaking down and he can't like win any matches or even play in any matches so right. although part of the olympic story here in in our major story number one andy murray and dan evans had an insane comeback in the doubles did you see that what they say five match points? Yeah, I think so, or six. I I just saw the highlights again, but it was like uh, Dan Evans, friend of the show. I will add, uh, insane comeback. And JP, you brought up a point about his sacrifice that he made to be at oh, the Olympics. Crazy. It, I saw. I saw it on Twitter. It said Dan Evans dropped 111 spots in the rankings because he chose to play in the Olympics. So he went from 58 to 169 which obviously has a lot of repercussions to it as he's going into these next tournaments because if he just would have went to go play in dc defended a few of his points 
that top 100 ranking gets you into a lot of different events. It gives you a lot of more opportunities to make money. Yeah. No, that's a seriously interesting story because Dan Evans, you know, literally essentially said, I'm going to play for my country instead of myself this week right. and I'm going to go to the Olympics. I'm not sure it would be good to know if he has played in the Olympics for Great Britain before. I would assume not actually. Right. Um, so this is probably his first opportunity. And, uh, and, yeah, not playing in Washington, he drops all those points, but he gets to be literally part of history doing a comeback with Andy Murray on court, freaking out. It was so cool to see. And you know, he's had a he's had a bit of an interesting last six months to a year with his performance, anyways. Yeah. And he's not super young. So he's probably maybe he's thinking, I want to, you know, try and get a, a medal for my country in the Olympics. I've already done super well as a pro tennis player. And that's just I thought that was cool to see. Instead of going to Washington, no disrespect to Washington and trying to defend right. those points um he goes to the goes to the yeah. olympics and comes in pretty clutch in that match with Andy Murray, so that was sick yeah it, i mean it's rare i feel like in today's today's world for for a player to do that but i wonder why since it only happens every four years why can't the atp just say hey if you play in the olympics you're you get to keep your points <laughs> Or like somehow, or like you can keep your ranking or something, because it just doesn't seem it doesn't seem right. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 conflicting interest. The ATP tour literally like used. I think at one point they had points with the Olympics, and then they were like, "Wait, we don't want people going to the Olympics instead of our tournaments." So <laughs> right. they like took away the points from the Olympics. So tennis will never get along. It's just an insane. It's a it's an insane place. But I think for you know. No, no disrespect to Atlanta or Washington, but like any player who has the chance to go play for the country at the Olympics, I think is going to go play. I don't think I don't think there's been many players who have like been like, nah, I'm the top guy in my country, but I'm just going to go play Washington. Like all, if you look at the bracket, like all the top players are at the Olympics who mm -hmm. aren't injured. Yeah, yeah, it is interesting, and not that we have to get into this, but it's also always fun to look through the graphics of how much countries pay. There are people like when they get a medal, and yeah. how like you know Hong Kong is paying 150k for a gold medal, and the U.S. pays like 33 grand. Oh really? Yeah, That's it's crazy. Super I didn't low. know any of these numbers. The U.S. is like, yeah. look, we're planning to get a lot, so we can't pay that much for each one. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, that is part of it, and and I think they use sort of like how the UFC kind of does with their fighters, like the platform that you get from being on team USA, you can parlay that into whatever kind of sponsorship deals and everything. After, That's but. true. Like it, it, it is crazy. You'll see like a lot of in Canada as well. It's the same kind of thing. Like I actually know a guy who's, who is like, you know, he's a pre won gold medal. He won multiple medals for Canada in speed skating and you know, speed skating is like That's a pretty sick. obscure sport here, yeah. but he like, you know, definitely rolled that into like Nike sponsorships and like being like a kind of a household name in Canada. So you make your, coin on the back end and i think all these federations these kind of greasy federations take the real money from uh from these wins so i don't know you know the olympics is always a little bit controversial with that right you're always like a little bit like what's going like that you know it's the same with the same with the world cup and these huge federations like it's yeah. always just like the craziest drama going down with like where they pick the events to go who they're paying off who you know who's whose checks are they cash and like it's all a bit bit uh bit wild including the opening ceremonies but we don't have to get into that hey we'll stay away from that yeah the opening ceremonies were crazy oh um, hopefully crazy. at the national bank open they do have a little bit of a different opening ceremony but you might be able to tell me more about that since you've been slash you're going yeah i can't make any promises because it is the french as well in canada oh, it's the no. quebecois uh so it'll be you know more canadian um, but yeah, super excited to be in Montreal in less than a week. Uh, we're going with an accreditation to the national bank open for myself. The first time ever, the slice has been there accredited multiple times. Uh, we've been over that tournament. Um, and I'm excited. Djokovic just announced though that he did, he, he has pulled out of the tournament. He's not going to be there, but he hasn't been there. He won it in 2016 and played one time, I think in 2018 and uh, other since then he just hasn't played. He's played Cincinnati. And then the U.S. Open, so no surprise there. And I wonder how it'll be affected by like whoever goes deep in the in like the singles tournament at the Olympics. Right. Will they pull it? Because then it would go like full week of tennis to full week of tennis with uh, 
National Bank Open, full week of tennis with Cincinnati, and then like a little break before the US Open. But it's just a lot of players would think that that's too much tennis. So it'll be interesting to see who else pulls out. But uh, I'm super excited. I'm ho- I'm I'm already trying to line up interviews. Um, and yeah, we're gonna be there giving you guys all these behind the scenes looks. If you're in Montreal, shout out. We'll see you at the tournament. Come say hi. Yes, please go say hi to Steven. Steven, who would be your say you have oh which reminds me we didn't even get it to get into this um your three people that you'd want to interview while you're out there if you could only get three which which who are the top three <laughs> dang okay well now now you put me on the spot but i have obviously thought of this Danil medvedev is my number one Ooh. Danil, if you're watching this i want to interview you in montreal i won't speak french although i know you can i my mon français n'est pas très bon very poor and yeah, I think you're the funniest guy on tour. I think he's a great personality. He would just be a hilarious interview. Uh, another guy I would love to interview is Darren Cahill, Yannick Ooh. Sinner's coach. So I'm gonna try and like get a backdoor connection to that because uh, because he's like got such a great you know I love watching him on TV. Don't you? Right. Like, on, when he comes to the ESPN, you can just tell he's like way smarter than a lot of the other like commentators because and then he like proves that he knows what he's talking about because he's literally coaching yannick center the number one player in the world two number one in the world um who else last one tommy paul i would say that i feel like that could happen i feel like that could happen happen. you know we're we're working on it we're got in the works as everyone knows here we're friends of the show with his camp so we'll see what happens but he's got an interesting I would love talking with him about tennis because we I've asked him questions in press before and he's just got a great tennis mind. Uh, right. but he just came top of mind. So those are my three guys. Montreal is going to be lit. JP, have you ever been to Montreal or Quebec or Canada in general? So I have been to Canada, but I only went to the Niagara Falls. <laughs> and when I when I went to cross the border, I took the bridge like a real like a real one. I didn't drive. Wait, so I walked. You, like, you just walk across. I walk. I mean, you know, I had to stop by, but I was pissed, man. I'm so glad you brought this up because I've barely been out of the country. So anytime, so I've, I've been to Mexico. Now I've been to Mexico twice and I went yeah. to the Dominican Republic in my senior year for like a dumb senior trip. Yeah. So, but when I went to Canada, I had no stamps on my passport. So I was hype. I'm like, oh, I basically begged my parents like, hey, we have to go across so we can at least get our passport stamped and then we'll screw around in whatever city it is. Maybe it was Toronto. I don't even I guess it's Toronto. Oh, um, I think it's called Niagara Falls. Yeah, Niagara Falls, the city of Niagara Falls. Oh, um, <laughs> I think I'm not even sure. This may, I think it might just be Niagara. We like walked over into some like downtown area of, I guess, Niagara. Yeah, because I had a friend that played soccer at Niagara. But it was on like the U.S. side. Okay, we're getting I'm getting out of hand with Both my countries geography. are like arguing over the falls. It's like a weird place. Yeah, but I went and we walked through, and you know they did their little thing. How long are you here for? I'm like, <laughs> brother, 15 minutes. Like, <laughs> here's my passport. He's like, oh, you're good. You don't need to get that stamped. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I think that's where you're wrong. I do need to get this stamped <laughs> because this is my first time leaving the country. Oh no, sorry, man. Uh, you're like with this tour, whatever, whatever. Like we we're not doing the stamps. I'm like, yeah. I ask one more time, like you know, please. <laughs> He's like, no. Like we have more people. I'm like, all right. So I didn't get Dude. my stamp, but I've been to He's Canada. Like, to. He's like, go away. Brutal, man. And Canadians are supposed to be nice. That's not very Canadian of him. But hey. uh, I will say he's from Ontario, most likely, and you know. It's probably the least Canadian province, I will say. I don't yeah, know. So Canada Border Patrol. Somewhere out, west, somewhere out north um, or out east, essentially. So yeah, Quebec can fall in the out east category. So, you know, it'd be great if you were coming with us to Montreal, JP, but not this year. But we'll be at a tournament accredited together soon. I know soon. it. No, nah, yeah, it'll happen for sure. And... Yeah. We can go ahead and get into our third story because some other people we will probably see at that tournament that you and I are both at will be Andy Roddick of the Served Podcast, 
Yeah. And possibly Jack Sock, John Isner, Sam Query, and Steve Johnson of the Nothing Major podcast. Steven, what was your first reaction when you saw that? Respect to, I mean, th that was a great first video that they did. What, what was your first reaction when you saw that? From the Nothing Major one? Yeah. Yeah, I just, I mean, I saw the clips and I was like, you know what? This is well done. This is these four guys. They all got personalities, I think. Stevie Johnson, does he have a personality? I've never yeah, really he, like, he's good. that much. Yeah, they're all cool. And yeah, obviously they're doing it like, they're doing it proper. You know, they're not just sitting in their room, like, you know, uh, like filming it with no kind of production or like editing right. around it. Like they're doing it like properly. It's cut really nicely and it looks good. It's called Nothing Major, which I think is a funny name because none of them have won a, ma a singles major. Uh, I think they talk about how Jack has won like a doubles or like a yeah. mixed doubles, but essentially, you know, no one, uh, to be honest, no one cares really about that, which is sad, but uh, Ooh, whoa. nothing major. That's funny. Well, they, I mean, they, it's like doubles is, doubles is one thing, but it's like, well, he's a singles player. He did make it to number like eight or six in the world, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Kind of scandalous in my books, actually. What He won Paris. That was crazy. A lot of people are uh, salty about that one. Why? They're they're salty because the I guess when you go back and look at his route to the championship, it was you know one of the what some what the haters would say an easy road. But is that what he told you? Nah, I will. I maybe we had the conversation, but I think I can't remember if it was with him or like just some of the other guys we were with. And for those of you guys that don't know, when Steven says was that when he was with you, Jack and I we attempted to start a podcast with our other boy Clark. So we have a little bit of a relationship with Jack and we we've known for a while that Jack's got the, he's got it in him to be a little media personality. He'd be a little podcast guy. Um, yeah. So no, yeah. his, his route I'm looking at right now. It was actually crazy to the like mass Paris, Ma Paris, Bercy masters. Uh, I believe this was 2017. So Djokovic was like still injured. Like, and I didn't think mm -hmm. he was playing. He beat, Fernando Verdasco in the quarterfinals, Julian Benito, who was a wild card in the semifinals, and then Philip Krajanovic, who was a qualifier in the final. <laughs> that has got to be the easiest route to a Masters. He got that ever. trophy at home, though. That's fine. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I can't hear you. He's like, I've got one Perry Bercy ring plugging my ear. That and I got my hand plugging the other one. No, Dude. like, uh, but yeah, no. So to the podcast, nothing major. Great title. I think that's really well done. And they're entering the media game. And then I'm already thinking Andy Roddick's now entered the media game. Definitely, you know, taking a lot of the eyeballs because his podcast is great as well, served. Right. And, you know, Andy Roddick is one of those guys who's he's been on the tennis channel for a long time. So I felt like this was like, I was kind of like, I was surprised that he hadn't had a podcast before right. this. Um, and what, but, you know, it's, you know, whatever. Every time he was on the tennis channel, I, I, he always looked like he was in a hostage situation like this, like <laughs> terrible camera, terrible. Like, it's like, Pot, like like cord hanging out of his ear it's like that's insane like yeah, we're doing this, this is not Andy free, and it looks like a zillion times better um but you know him having his own podcast and kind of going full in on it makes sense um but you know the feeling is sometimes you're like these guys are the ones playing the pundits are supposed to pundit and now they come and be pundits it's like where's our job yeah you know at the end of the day the way we got to take it is a, ri a rising tide lifts all ships that's correct. And so, look, they they make their podcast. Hopefully, it crushes because then it'll bring more people to that. They'll be like, oh, well, let's see what else is out there. Then they see these two handsome guys with the Betway logo looking, sitting nice in the top right corner of your computer screen, the sure mics, the backwards hat, no. the slice branding. And it's just, wait, hang on a second. Let me hit the subscribe button here. Wait, it's because another green podcast on YouTube. Another all green. green. Steven Mike. was first, and this is what I wanted to say too, because you know, obviously it's it's tough seeing all these athletes get into it. And I'm I'm laid in on the tennis game compared to Steven. Steven was here for a while. When did the YouTube channel start? January 2017. We're like 850 episodes in. Come on, man. That's you gotta respect that grind. And no, but I think you're right, JP. Sorry to cut in, but you know we are here, and for years, like for literally years, I've been like applying for media accreditation or like talking to these big outlets, and I'll be like, "Hey, I got this like show on YouTube," and it's just like it falls on deaf ears where they're like, "Wait, what newspaper are you writing for?" I'm like, "What? Why does that matter? No one's reading it." Right. So like, like that doesn't matter. I got a hundred thousand views last week. Like it's 
so them coming on to this platform, I think people go, Andy Roddick. Oh, he's like, you know, the most popular male U.S. Right. tennis player since like Agassi. Like he's now he has his own show here. Interesting. Okay. And like all these guys are there, you know, in the real world, YouTube is not like a new thing at all. It's like been yeah. the place where young people consume content for like over a decade. But in the tennis world, it's still like we're <laughs> we're like three decades behind in the tennis world. So this will help. So this, I like that attitude, JP, and I do see it as like, this will help us and will help get, you know, the other players in this game, like Gil Gross and uh, the Game to Love Boys and, you know, Cam Williams and the other ones who are in this world that also help them as well. So welcome to the club. Yep. Made, nothing Major Boys and Andy Roddick. It would be awesome to have you on the show. And would we look love, forward to you doing that. Would love to have them all on the show. I want to hit on one thing with the nothing major one. I don't know if, did you see the clip that they were talking about with John Isner sending Sam query, the like recovery thing for his Achilles? No, I didn't. What happened there? So I think Steve Johnson brought it up, but they were like, so John, Sam query, he tears his Achilles. John sends him whatever sort of, you know, machine or whatever it is that just helps with recovery and expensive piece of equipment sends it to sam for him to use and he like overnights it to him which was an extra whatever 90 dollars i think they said and apparently john you know he sends it off sam super grateful like hey man thank you so much for sending this my weight and remember these guys have known each other for a long time and then uh, allegedly these are all allegations according to the podcast John calls Steve Johnson and is like, Hey, like, uh, you know, the, the overnight delivery was $70. Um, you think that Sam would Venmo me for it. And the way they tell the story, they're acting like John was dead serious. Obviously John and the thing, he's like, well, hang on. I didn't call him. I didn't call him. Then I go to the comments and I see John, he doubled down in the comments. He was like, um, he was like, no, it, the, the shipping wasn't included in the, in the actual gift thing. Like I gave them this much, the shipping was the extra cost or whatever. I commented under, I said, double down do- to double down on this is crazy. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think John Isner's in the right to send the Venmo request? I don't know. Like that's so, uh, I don't think he is in the right. He's won like millions of dollars playing tennis. That's what Sam said. He goes, I looked up his career winnings. It said $23 million. <laughs> Bro, that cannot be true. I cannot believe John Isner would be doing that. I know, bro. There's got to be so, something. They got to be. They got to be inflating something. But that. That's the type of. I feel like that's the type of stuff you want to see when you get to see these guys on a podcast. Is kind of like the behind the scenes of like what it's like between these pro players and uh, right. just seeing them as humans as well. Funny story about John Isner. I'll actually tell this one because no one's heard this. Actually, probably Ooh. people who watched for a long time. Uh, but he'll. Th- I want to bring him on the pod and ask him about this. But we were. This was Delray Beach virtual media i think 2020 or 2021 i guess one of these days and he's at the tournament he's playing i believe it's delray could be somewhere else anyways he loses i'll look it up he loses a match comes into press and uh or vice versa i forget which one and the the reporter comes in he goes let's just say he lost now i'm I'm butchering this story now because i don't remember anything (laughs) but he, he i think he lost and he came in and he's like and the reporter goes, hey, he goes, hey, congrats on the win. And starts asking him a quick question about the win he just thought he had. Oh, and, and John's like, hey, bro, I lost. It was just, it was savage. And I've seen that happen before. Like Rafa, a female reporter did that to Rafa one time. And it was just like, great. Cra- you want to talk about crazy doubling down? She doubled down. Have you seen that clip? Yes, bro. You've yes. seen that one. Okay, isn't that the best thing ever? She's like, I was sorry about your loss. Or your, she's like, he's like, congrats anyway. He's, he's like, uh, I lost. He's like, yeah, well, every loss is a win. He's like, <laughs> you got, you got to respect it. Like that, that is the way to play it. If you're, if you're hurt. <laughs> oh, I just like, she's just like, does it. She's like, I'm not losing this. I'm going to make you think that you won right now, Rafa. <laughs> I think they did it to Bedosa too, like last year or something. It's crazy. I don't get like it's like I know how chaotic it can be. Like you're running around, like people are like, "Hey, Raf is in the press conference room, like right now." So you're like running in there, and maybe you've been upstairs, like working on your like story for a different match. Right. So you go in there, but I don't get the like if I didn't know 
like a really good question. I will not ask it. Although I do sometimes just say things just to be like, you know, you never know what's going to happen. But yeah. How many people are usually... the result of the match? It's pretty easy to not ask about the result. <laughs> um, right. And how do you just not know what happened? Uh, how yeah, many people are usually in the press conference room, like journalists? Oh, like sometimes like three, like two. I mean, there's a classic example of Hubert Hercatch winning a match, coming and sitting down, and like literally no one asks him a question. He's like, thanks, guys. <laughs> he just walks out. Dude. So, and then I've never been at the majors, right? Because, you know, the establishment. So right. lots of people in those press conferences. But, I, you know, I've been in, yeah, I've been at ones where there's like 20, 25 reporters for sure. You're like, you got to figure it okay. out. Okay. Yeah. Like, because the, all the press conference rooms I've been in is either college football, NFL, UFC. And it's pretty, I would say it's pretty consistently probably in that like 20 to 25 range. Yeah. And then if it's a small school, then yeah, it would be like, you know, three people. But in tennis, I feel like probably at a, I would say at most of these tournaments, at least ATP 250 to ATP 500, there's not a lot. And so not a lot. it does kind of blow my mind of, man, if you have some eager people that want to come and do media, you should be begging them like, hey, yeah, come to the tournament, please, you know, do your thing, get, get us some coverage, but. Yeah, hey, one day I, know, I don't want to rag on media too hard because like some of these people get paid like nothing and they're like not even covering. I think this guy like what tennis was not his thing. Like he just kind of like was there. Right. He's like, I, you know, he's like, I think, uh, you know, just having an off day. But that was funny. And I, it, he, J John had a, a, a funny reaction to it. It is on our socials from like five years ago. So I'll go find that. And when we get him on the show, I'll, uh, I'll ask him about it. We'll, we'll have a good laugh. That'll be funny. Yes. Um, Hey, okay. before we get into Smash or Pass, I forgot to ask this at the beginning of the episode. Steven, it yeah. is the Olympics. And in another life, if we decided not to pick up the mics and the cameras, we there's a good chance we would be participating right now. We were both – how old are you? 29. Yeah, see, we're both in our peak. So we probably yeah. would have been there had we chosen to earlier on in life. That's all it comes Correct. down to, nothing else. If you were participating in the Olympics – this year what are the three events you would want to win a gold medal in the most i think it would be gymnastics like the guys who are doing the flipping around on the bars and or like yep. any of those things and like landing and sticking it is yes. so sick they're also jacked it's crazy uh and shout out to my dad he was one of the elite gymnasts in ontario growing up he's like again he's 83 years old so he's like he was he was born literally in the 40s, like in the middle. Ooh. He was born in World War II. Uh, but he was, there's a picture of him doing like a handstand on top of one of those, like, I th th think they call him like a stable horse. I forget what they're called. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking like, I have no idea what it's called, but I know what you're like talking about. Big fat thing with the two bars on top of it. Anyways, so that's awesome. I think that and swimming, although I don't, I'm, I'm a good swimmer. I'm a surfer. Swimming is like tiring. I hate it. But I think winning a swimming race like Michael Phelps style where you like win, you get to like slap the water and be like, I'm a G like that is pretty. And you're like the most shredded people on earth. So you got a You got a stroke you'd want. Yeah, just I mean, butterflies so crazy, like the way they do yeah. that. They're like literally like majestic. But I just think any like butterfly. Yeah, not breaststroke. Um, freestyle. Yeah, yep. any of them, but really, yeah. And then I think lastly, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Like, I'm trying to pick sports that are actually Olympic sports. You know what I mean? Not like yeah. basketball. Right, uh, right, right. I wouldn't want to win the Olympics. I'd want to win the NBA championships. Come on. Um, like, yeah, I think maybe like doubles beach volleyball would be pretty sick. Ooh, yes. I love okay. that. Yeah. Okay. How about you? How about you? I love that. For number three, I'm going to go with – the, this last one you just said, I think that winning beach volleyball would be awesome. I love the beach. I just filled in in a league right across the street from me last Monday. Dang. Played played pretty well for my first time back out there. It would be awesome to win. And it being a pro beach volleyball player has to be one of the best professions because your life literally revolves around going to different places that are on the beach in the best, most beautiful parts of the world. Yeah. So Great. let me get that beach volleyball as well. Number two, I'm going to go with swimming, but I would want to be a part of the 100-meter free relay 
because I just saw this past one really either free free relay or the medley relay. What because, is the relay? I forget. Is so like four, a team event? Yeah, four swimmers. Yeah. Um, and then each person goes down and back in the hundred. Obviously, there's that, different that distances. Yeah. The teamwork would be nuts. Yeah, that 2008 Olympics in American, the youth of America, our brains is just engraved because that's when Phelps broke the record for most gold medals right. at the Olympics. Was that when and, Ryan Lochte was on the team? Yep, Ryan Lochte. Um, and in their one of their relays, Jason Lezak, he came back in the last leg and hawked down the French dude. And he had Lezak had no business getting down, like catching up. And I just remember being, I guess I was in seventh grade, just he he out touches him. The, the times come in, you just stand up, you screaming, let's go, USA, USA. And uh, so, yeah, that would be awesome. And then number one, you might be sick that you didn't say this, but the 100 meter dash on, on your track. <laughs> being the fat, being That's labeled fair. the fastest man in the world has to yeah. be one of the coolest titles of all time yeah that that that's a good one I, you know what that brings me out too i saw this clip today of this like this it's like this meme now it's like this guy who's i think he's from haiti he's like doing his like pre he's doing yeah. his pre-track like to the camera he's like what's up he's like you know you know gang star he's like and then he like goes and like trips on the first hurdle it's like <laughs> that like meme of like me before going to bed just saying like i'm not gonna be on my phone late night it's like me like, <laughs> right yeah. scrolling. it's like anyways Man. track stars yeah that is sick that's like a that's like arguably the most vintage olympic sport like summer olympic sport and uh yeah so J, jp hubby just ripping it on 100 meter and just being like oh. let's go like usain bolt when he was doing Man. that and i think what's so what the thing about track is it's the i feel like it's it's everyone's first taste of competition in our life because yeah. what's the first thing you do? You know, you get to first grade, second grade, you're on the playground. The first competition you ever have is less race. That's true. And then and everyone then, seems to be like forced into doing track and field in like elementary school. Is that a thing? Like you're just all doing it. Yeah. We're like, just what all do you want to race? You're either doing a thousand meter or the hundred meter. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and you, and you realize that like, you know, in fifth grade, you, you pull in that fastest mile time, you're beating everybody in the race. Like you're automatically cool. Yeah. So yeah. imagine you're the fastest man in the world. <laughs> yeah. That'd be nuts. Those are good picks. Those are good picks. JP. Let, hey, let us know in the comments, which events you would want to win a gold medal in because there's, so there's a lot of great events out there. A lot of things I would like to win. Yeah. For sure. Fencing included. That could be sick. Yes, but fencing would be dope. I respect the fencers. They'll chop you up. Okay. Smash or pass. Ready? Dumb Smash ready. or pass. City Open is miking up doubles players for the first time ever. JP, smash or pass? Smash. It's taken too long. NBA, NFL, they've always had these guys miked up. Some of the best performing videos pieces of content at the end of the season is the best of mic'd up compilations next we got to get the single players mic'd up i love this move by dc steven what do you think yeah love it for doubles although i don't think so smash i don't think it will maybe really you know it'll make for some good social content it's just to me i don't know if it's going to make you know doubles that much better but i think it would make singles really interesting to see i don't know Imagine. why they don't have that like in the in in the NBA, do they have like an actual mic on them, or is it just like one of those like shotgun mics, like pointed at the player? Dude, that that's a honestly a great question because I, I always wondered how they even did it with football because of how much they move. And in yeah. football, they stick it like under the pad and like tape it onto them. And they have like a receiver on his hip or something. That's crazy. It's just it's yeah, it's like the smallest thing that they're able yeah. to to put on them. In basketball, I I do want to say they have them mic'd up because usually those guys wear like a tight undershirt yeah. and i want to say it's underneath that yeah but i mean i feel like you could do that in tennis pretty good but the guys probably are superstitious and they, but i feel like you could get away in tennis with like a, sh a really good shotgun mic you know just uh, like yeah because it's so quiet anyways yeah 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 at the cross at the changeovers or when they're talking to their 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 team anyways i feel like we never see that like you want i want to see like with a translator what Al alcaraz is saying to carlos moya 
right. constantly all that song. You know what I mean? Like, it would just be hilarious. yeah. I mean, hey, if if it's okay to show us what they're saying in the corner of a UFC fight, there's nothing that's happening on the tennis court that's any crazier than that. Yeah, you get to see like you know Djokovic screaming at his camp, like what he actually says in certain. Right. Um. Freaking dead. Net- yes. Ne- next one. I don't know if you saw the the clip of them, but Billie Jean King and Snoop Dogg collabing at the tennis match. I mean. Smash! I I feel like there's no one has anything bad to say about about Billie Jean King, and that you know that includes me. Like she's just the funny thing is is she's just everywhere, right? Like everything. Like you go, you look at your like your your cousins, you know, like grade seven graduation. She's showing up and she's giving a commencement <laughs> speech about like success and believing in yourself. She's right. telling the story of like the original seven. Everywhere you look is Billie Jean King. She's she's literally transcendent. I don't know. What do you think, JP? Yeah, it's smash as well. She transcendent is the perfect word. And I think the coolest thing, another thing I saw on Twitter, Billy Jean King and Snoop Dogg went to the same high school in California. Get out of here. So that is crazy. And imagine like that those are your two. Every high school has like, you know, maybe one famous alumni, and your high school has two, and it's Snoop Dogg and Billy Jean King. Literally, one of the greatest crossovers of all time. That, that is, yeah, it's it's so transcendent. It's it, it's like its own universe. That's crazy. She's in great shape, by the way. Just to to be like that old and traveling around as much as she does. True, that's true. It's not Trail easy. Blazer. Not easy being a celebrity. Um, okay, Holger Runa and Patrick Moradaglu breaking up again. Smash or pass, JP. Oh man, I I do I love the drama, but I think I'll have to pass because I I don't want to go three in a row smashes. I'm gonna pass because I like both of them, and it's like the it's like the couple in high school that everybody likes both the people, and so and for some reason they break up, and you're like, dang, like you want you're still gonna be friends with both of them, but deep down you and your friend group you want them to get back together because you do think they are good for each other. <laughs> So yeah. I'm passing because they need to get back. They need to get back together. What do you think? You want them to stay together. Okay. I was going to, yeah. I'm smashing because I, I want Holger Runa to be with somebody that's like less of a celebrity coach. Right. And no disrespect to Brad, to Mar- 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 I think he knows what he's talking about, but Kenneth Carlson, the other coach is just kind of in the background, just focusing on getting this guy up to the level that he can be, which I think is competing with Alcaraz and center for the biggest titles and he's kind of plateaued in the last 12 months for sure so he got there he beat Djokovic for the Perry Bercy uh Masters final in 2020 2022 what no one says that 2022 <laughs> and I was like okay next stop he's gonna be contending for majors all of 2023 it just didn't really work out for him and he's kind of stalled so he's been on and off again with Mar- Maradoglu I think he's off and I kind of hope it stays that way so I'm passing great or I guess I'm smashing. You passed. I'm smashing because I want them to to stay apart and I want him to just focus. But yeah, I think he'll do that regardless. So all good. Uh, yeah, I agree. We the plateau has been there, and everybody. It, it's good for tennis if if he's back on top. The next one, the mean tweet that Andy Murray reposted about him on Instagram. Did you see this tweet? Uh, well, I saw it now that you've highlighted it. Yeah. So uh. Okay. Is that what it said? If they leave Andy Murray out in the rain any longer, he'll start rusting. Yeah, because it was like a screen grab of Andy Murray on the boat during the opening like ceremony thing, and it was raining on him. And somebody replied to it underneath it, and Andy Murray screenshot it, put it on his Instagram story with the laughing emoji. <laughs> like Andy, Mur- like so smash because I love when fans you know are funny like that, and I right. love that Andy Murray is just like the greatest character ever. Like I could, Im- I could just imagine. You know, Andy Murray and you know any really that any of the British p- players like just roasting each other and it just being like the funniest scenario ever. I don't know if you saw this. Sorry to go on a tangent. Drac Draper and Dan Evans do this like back to back, almost like the shoe game at a wedding. It's like who has a better mu- st- taste in music, and they're like, "Oh, a me, mate." Like they're like, "Oh, oh mate, he's listening to like it. it's, it's trash." Such funny content, and I will say both of them friends of the show. So. Anyways, Huge. that was great. What did you think of that? Smash or pass? Oh, smash. It's, it's the best. Ho- hopefully, we can get more of it. W- one of my goals is to have one of those tweets that is – because it's like that perfect amount of like this guy is not being nasty at all by saying that. He's 
yeah. legit just being funny. And yeah, when you're funny, he is old. right? He's 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 old. He's got a lot of metal in him. And we know <laughs> what happens true. when you leave metal out in the rain. That's true. That's what it's about. So yeah, no, good on Andy for highlighting that. That's uh, I think it's a smash for both of us. Yes. Okay, JP, what about this one? Alcaraz photo with the field hockey team. Man, I honestly I could go either way with this because <laughs> I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna smash it because it's it's electric and he just has that. Not the like, only one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has that boyish grin to him too, where he like you know he knows exactly what he's doing, but to do it fresh off the heels of all the Radicanu rumors. Crazy. Is he a, Crazy. is he a little player or is he just he's just that guy in just, Olympic Village? He's a victim. Like every like he didn't go up and ask for that photo. I'll tell you that <laughs> he's for a free. victim. They're like, "Hey, hey Carlitos. Can we take hey, they're like you know, they're, Yeah, they're like, "Hey, let me let us get a photo with you." And he's just like, "Oh, another one. Okay." I still think, you know, that that clip of us talking about Radu, R- Alka Radu Kanu, or what are the people calling it? That kind of went off on Instagram. So I think there's Dude, got some like well. people want that. So, you know, I think it might be a little posh Beckham, posh David Beckham thing where they like spend time in different countries and they're like right. kind of like pretending they're not together, but they are. You know what I mean? I love it. I, hey, if they become the next the next Beckham power couple, oh my gosh. That would be that would be crazy. That would be that yeah. would be crazy. We would be sad. Uh, so yeah, I'm smashing on that big time. Um, on the photo. Next, yeah. I mean, why Djokovic not? Olympic gold chances. How do we like it? Pass. I literally just thought about it before this, so I tweeted it out instantly because that's what I do. I think it and tweet it. So that's how it needs, it. That's how it needs to happen. And I was like. Wait, if so, if Djokovic and Alcaraz play in the final and Djokovic beats Alcaraz, is that an upset at this point? Ooh, I think it should like, be. So you can't, like, I saw an article and what made me think of it was an article. It's like, it said Djokovic stays on track to win Olympic gold by beating Nadal in the second round. I was like, what do you mean on track? Like, it's like it's acting like that's a given. Like, he, st- he just got killed by Alcaraz in the Wimbledon final. Right. And right now Alcaraz is the guy to beat. And he who who, mind you, just won the French Open like a month and a half ago on the same court. So I think this right now is Alcaraz's match tournament to lose. Uh so I'm passing on his chances and I think the pressure is gonna get to him. But I'll be happy to eat my words and get slayed by the Nole family uh after this. What do you think, JP? I will also pass on it, but I will not go as far to say the pressure will get to him. I don't Whoa. think it'll be I don't think it'll be a pressure thing. I just think it could be Alcaraz no, just, just might just might outplay him. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. But you know, it's that the you know you have seen the pressure get to him before At, when he was trying to get the Grand Slam against Medvedev in the U.S. Open final 2021. He threw a donut. Pressure. He was crying when he lost to Juan Martin Del Potro in Rio 2016. For the gold medal, literally crying, and he was losing his mind in 2021 in Japan, losing to Zverev, losing his mind. Literally, smashed his racket and threw it into the crowd. There was no one there, but still, like the pressure, uh, like he feels the pressure at the Olympics. Nah, he don't feel the pressure. I don't care what you're saying. That that's that's heat of the moment. You, if you really <laughs> felt the pressure, I don't think you win that many tournaments. No, that's the point. He's won that many tournaments, and he's won zero Olympics. That doesn't happen. He's won like he's made the final of like fifty percent of the majors he's played, which is the craziest stat ever. And he's won zero. I don't even think he's made the final of a of a of the of the Olympic tournament. And he's played in four of them. Like you can't tell me that's not pressure. What else is it? I'm telling you right now, it's not pressure. Okay. All right. He's in, Djokovic he's in would denial. not fall. Like one. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> oh, oh, that's good stuff. Anyways, we'll see. It's going to be really interesting to see how this uh, this plays out. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, but yeah, I'm passing on that. And so is JP. Yeah. Okay. A uh, couple more here. Alcraz Nadal doubles team smash or pass JP smash these photos that these two glorious Spaniards have given us just from their first match. I mean, I, it, it's been one of my favorite weeks to scroll. That was probably one of my favorite days to scroll on Twitter ever. I feel like every single time, a new 
photo came across, it was just even better than the last one. Yeah. You can't, so, you can't make it up. It doesn't get any better. No, bro. And that's why I'm trying to tell you last week, he needs to do a doubles career after he retires from singles and just keep playing with Alcaraz. He could, or, but I don't think rude, or rude. Yeah. Who knows? What do you, uh, yeah, I'm smashing on that huge, like so sick. Like that one photo, I think you posted it on your story today of both of them. Were they both like flexing like this? They both jump and run back from the net at the beginning of the match. Just so iconic, literally. You know, it's it's just so crazy that Alcaraz is from Spain as well. I know. Like you kind of wish he was from a different country because like how much Sp like Spanish tennis is just going to dominate when it comes to like right. total total majors one over the last 50 years. It's going to be absolutely crazy Spain because I'm, you know, my over under for Alcaraz is like 20 right now. Yeah. 20 majors. No, that's a good line. I I also think the first t the first day that you and I meet in person, we need to recreate the photo of Alcaraz and Nadal up at the net. That would be sick. Let's do it. We got to get the exact angle. That would be great. Right. Yeah. Write it down. <laughs> Bad we're jump. Gonna, we're going to make that happen. Yes. Okay, last one. Smash a pass, and then JP gets to go to bed. Olympic tennis TV coverage. Has it been brutal for you like it has been for us, and everyone's Bro, complaining about it? It's the worst. Like... I mean, I, I honestly can't even pinpoint the one. I can't pinpoint the one biggest pain point because it all sucks. It's and all pain. It's all pain. All I just wake up and I, I try to do my best, my best recon on, all right, how, how can I prepare myself better today than I did yesterday to, to set myself up? What can up I for do better? Best? Right. Because I, I, for a while, I was not even pointing the finger. You don't want to be an index finger guy. You want to be a thumb guy. And I was being a thumb guy, but every now and then, dude, you they push you to that line, and it's no longer on me. No, it's not on you. It's on them. I'm passing the TV commentary. I mean, I know one of them, Sharon Fitchman, she's been good. Up in Canada, it's different as well. But they like don't even they didn't even have the scoreboard on like the 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 match for like half the match. So I'm like. Their whole point would go, and they would like almost like aim the camera at a scoreboard to tell you the score every like four points. I was like, "What is going on?" And then the website, the Olympic website, Dude. I can't figure that out either. I I'm like, I can't go before. between the bracket and the schedule when it's on like men's tennis or women's tennis, and I can't go to like doubles tennis. Like it's, I have to like hack the URL each time. I'm literally like on the women, men's bracket, and then I'm like typing in "whoa men's bracket." <laughs> right. Like, oh, that's the only way I know how to do it. I'm I'm pulling up Absolutely that page. Crazy. I'm hitting Command F and I'm typing the name. I'm trying to see in and just see if I get any info on them. I'm I'm learning like JavaScript, trying to find a freaking score <laughs> about the Olympics. Yes. Hey, so next Olympics, the Olympic Committee. I, I don't know what city it's going to be in, but y'all should hire Stephen to call some of these matches. That's true. Call you should. JP and I, uh, color commentary, color analyst team. That would be awesome. And I think that's the pod, JP, isn't it? That is the pod, but it's also the slice, Stephen. We almost we almost missed it last week. For those y'all go watch last week, I try to throw Stephen the Dwayne Wade at LeBron James alley you. But hey, I'm not pointing the finger. I'm pointing the thumb. It was on me. <laughs> I, did, I dropped the ball again. What am I waiting for? Hey Just man, like, great, greatness waits on no man. That's that's true. That's true. I'm trying to say subscribe. Yeah. Actually, go review us on Apple or Spotify. Thanks for being here. Follow JP on Twitter and Instagram for tennis takes and a lot of other takes. And yeah, I think, is that it, JP? Or what do we got? I was going to preview next week, um, but I don't have anything written down. I think the Olympics are what we're following this week. Yeah, we're following the Olympics. We're locked in on the medal, the medal count. Sorry, Washington. I only watch wherever Dan Evans is, and he's at the Olympics. <laughs> we are now Losing. a Dan Evans. We're a Dan Evans podcast. That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, this has been the Slice Tennis Podcast with Stephen Bowden and JP Hovey, Episode 7 in the books. Subscribe. See you next time. Over and out.